Hi, it's Pete Birchler of StockMarketAlchemy.com. Today is actually Saturday, uh, March 22nd. This morning I'm going to go over uh, kind of a quick highlight on some things on the stock indexes and give an opinion on what's going on here and what to uh, what to look for, what to watch out for. Uh, I'm going to look at a few different time frames here. And what's going on right now is uh, we're having a multiple time frame uh, divergence happening in the stock indexes and we're, uh, this is a bearish divergence which is indicative of a potential topping pattern so I'm going to show this on a few different time frames here uh, first off let's look at uh, let's look at a weekly chart uh, so this is the uh, SPY ETF which mirrors the S&P 500 price and uh, this is a weekly chart so we're going to zoom in here and we can see that uh, you know, as we get into this year here the, the MACD down here uh, peaked in January uh, at these with price at these levels so a brief correction into February and uh, then we've seen a move uh, to, to a higher high here on an attempted breakout of those January highs and on that uh, attempted breakout we can see there's a much lower uh, high in the MACD uh, so this is a weekly time frame bearish divergence and that's uh, a divergence is the typical uh, uh, sign of momentum loss or slowing down in a market before the market changes direction uh, and if you uh, do not look at a lot of technical analysis if you just go back through some charts look at the significant highs and lows you know higher high at the uh, end of the 2007 bull market price there and lower low in the MACD. Then when we saw the bear market end, we saw lower low in price, but a higher bottom in the MACD. These are all divergence patterns. Um, and prior to the major corrections, this 17% correction in 2010, this 21% correction in 2011, we also saw higher highs in price and lower highs in the MACD um, relative to the prior peaks. Um, we, we've seen a bit of this type of a divergence already uh, here earlier this year uh, into the August high, uh, only leading to a minor correction, you know, just a simple uh, three or four week pullback. Um, at some point after an extended uh, run like this um, over the last year and a half in the markets, uh, we can probably assume that there's uh, realistically going to be a more significant correction than these uh, uh, four, five, six percent corrections we've seen. Um, maximally over the last uh, year and a half or so. Uh, so that's uh, really what I'm leaning towards being uh, the potential here. Now if we move down into a, uh, let's actually look at a monthly chart uh, first here for context. So this is a monthly chart and while there's not a divergence present on the monthly chart we can see the MACD is uh, at an elevated level, you know, the highest it's been in all time uh, which uh, to some extent makes sense with the uh, market being at all-time highs uh, but if you look back at these past uh, bull market highs in 2007 and then 2000 uh, we can see the MACD uh, not necessarily making a, a major divergence pattern prior to those highs so we're seeing a monthly uh, potential you know quote unquote overbought type of condition in the MACD then you look at the weekly chart that we just looked at we're seeing a bearish divergence pattern uh, also on a candlestick pattern we can see there was a, uh, a reversal type of candlestick here and that uh, stocks made a slightly higher high just by a few pennies uh, and reversed and closed near the lows somewhat of a shooting star uh, type of pattern here which is also a candlestick reversal pattern uh, to go with the uh, divergence now if we move down to a daily chart uh, zoom out just a little bit and look at the last few months of history here uh, this was the February 5th low down here and we can see that uh, the MACD uh, basically peaked with the market uh, uh, peak a couple weeks ago in early March and then we saw just a just a slightly higher high uh, here on Friday so yesterday uh, but we see the MACD uh, not even coming close to making a new high uh, and then we saw the market actually make the higher high and then reverse and close all the way down to the lows uh, so this was a uh, not an outside day or not a key reversal day uh, but it is uh, significant in that uh, we saw higher highs followed by a broad scale reversal uh, all the indexes reversing off of their uh, intraday highs um, with this divergence uh, pattern here uh, on multiple time frames so uh, this is uh, something that I think could develop into a potentially a larger scale correction in fact my recommendation here would be that uh, 1B uh, not long stocks uh, and less
price breaks back above Friday's high. So I would basically be flat or out of stocks here, um, even even on an intermediate term basis, um, unless we can see uh, prices move back above this high. Uh, definitely for longer term investment type of positions, based off of some other work that I do in, in uh, tracking reversal patterns and trends in the market, I view this February low as a significant uh, low in the market. If we see prices move back down below the February low, and uh, especially if that happens faster than this February to uh, March rally took place over the last six weeks, if we see a rather swift correction back down below those lows, um, that uh, in my opinion would likely be indicative of a larger scale um, trend change or shift to the downside. Uh, at least a major correction and also at some point here we're going to see a bull market high whether that happens sooner or uh, even a couple years down the road uh, and be in for a significant uh, correction in stock so uh, that's what I'm looking at here basically is a, is a multiple time frame divergence pattern uh, a reversal pattern on the daily chart a reversal pattern on the weekly chart uh, and if we do see prices uh, break lower breaking support um, this might be a time that uh, Someone who has, uh, you know, trading skills and being able to, uh, to enter short positions and manage those um, to consider a short position. Uh, very simply, um, I've made some videos on how to handle uh, bearish engulfing patterns, which uh, this Friday's reversal is not an engulfing pattern, but uh, these type of, uh, you know, reversals can be treated relatively similarly. Is in uh, here we have a reversal day, but if uh, on Monday or next week we see price gap up and continue higher, that's not very significant. Yet if we see a lower low, just requiring the market to make a lower low um, gives us some indication that there is a, at least minor continuation of the move lower. And uh, simply entering, uh, in this case, entering short uh, a penny below Friday's low with a stop above Friday's high and then uh, exiting half of the position. Uh, on a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio. So let's say the risk is from 189 to uh, 186. So there's three dollars here. So we'd enter short uh, here at 186, or you know just below Friday's low, and then cover the position at 183 or half the position at 183, uh, giving us a one-to-one -one reward to risk ratio. Uh, and then at that point. Um, since we've exited half the position at a one unit profit, we can still leave our stop all the way up here and have a break even trade even if the market comes all the way back up and stops that out. Uh, we've, in that case, we would have then uh, gained uh, kind of half a unit on that one portion and then lost half a unit on the other. So we've still created a break even scenario there. Um, another option is if you want to uh, do better than break even is you can uh, exit half the position uh, at that level, that 183 level, and then move the stop down either to a break-even position uh, or even somewhere to slightly better than break-even, so uh, slightly lower than these highs uh, to put a little bit of profit in the position but still allow it room to, to possibly come down, uh, consolidate, and then uh, roll over again. Uh, so that's a suggestion there. And then as far as for longer term, for really profiting from any type of potential decline here, uh, you need to have some type of mechanism uh, to move stops as the market falls, and then uh, what I've really be you know developed expertise in is is developing understanding and indicators that show me uh, with a high degree of precision when a correction is likely to be complete um, and likely to turn back up. And uh, if you go back through uh, some of these videos or blog posts um, after this February 5th day, you know I sent out uh, you know videos and emails to people who subscribe to my website and lists, uh, e even the free subscribers, and said, "Look, this is a, a high probability of being a corrective low here." Uh, and then we saw you know the move up the following day to confirm that, uh, and then we did see uh, higher highs in the market, which was my uh, anticipation and what I basically said to uh, people uh, listening to that information. So. At this point, what I'm saying is um, we have kind of the opposite scenario, and then we've moved to a higher high. Uh, we've had some extremes of complacency uh, recently in the market, and now we're seeing this reversal. Um, I would view this reversal day uh, somewhat uh, analogous to this reversal day, saying that if we then see the market, you know, um, as we saw the market make a higher high here, 
uh, relative to that reversal day. If we see the market make a lower low relative to Friday, uh, that could be a, at least a minor indication that uh, we could see some continuation to the downside. Uh, the question then becomes um, how, to ta how to manage the trade at that point. Uh, uh, so if there's anybody that wants more information on that, you can leave a comment here on YouTube uh, or, or uh, comment on the blog at stockmarketalchemy.blogspot.com. Uh, I can put some information like that in, in another video. Uh, so with that, I will let you guys go. Have a great day and all the best to your trading.